Hi, I'm TJ Woody from Integrated Project Services, and I head the Cleaning and Process Validation Group. Quality risk management has become a buzzword in the pharmaceutical industry as industry and regulatory guidelines move to risk-based strategies and data-driven analysis. Today, I want to talk about the risk, the move to risk management and handling of products within a manufacturing facility, specifically the revision to Udrelex's EU guidelines for GMP for medicinal products for human and veterinary use, Volume 4. One of the reasons for the revision is to improve the guidance for the prevention of cross-contamination and the inclusion of a toxicological evaluation. The key difference between the previous version and this version is the statement that measures taken to prevent cross-contamination should be commensurate with the risks. The previous version had language that certain antibiotics, certain cytotoxic, certain hormones, and certain, certain highly active drugs require dedicated or segregated facilities. The new version requires a toxicological assessment where threshold values are used. These threshold values are health-based limits, also called permissible daily exposures, or PDE values, similar to the acceptable daily intakes in the U.S. These PDE values are derived from clinical and non-clinical data. They take into account cytotoxicity, genotoxicity, developmental and reproductive hazards, and then, then apply the appropriate safety and modifying factors. These threshold values then factor into the overall risk assessment where other factors are considered, including facility and equipment design, personnel and material flow, cleaning processes, physical and chemical nature of the products, and analytical capabilities, which are key. The outcome of this quality risk management process forms the basis to decide the necessity for and the extent to which equipment and facilities need to be dedicated to a particular product or product family. And this can range from product-specific, product contact equipment, all the way to an entire dedicated manufacturing facility and a host of reasons in between. One neat aspect of this guidance is it takes this risk assessment and it moves it to the design phase of the process where these threshold values can be looked at in terms of the equipment grouping, acceptance criteria can be calculated, and you can determine if your analytical methods are appropriate. Sometimes it seems more appropriate to over-design and overbuild a facility to meet perceived dedication and segregation guidelines. But the additional capital costs and ongoing expenses to do this is not cost effective. More complexity doesn't equal more compliance. Right-sizing a facility based on scientific rationale is the most logical approach.